All right, so here we are underneath, and you can see that there's the charge pipe and there's the adapter where it goes to. Um, a lot of people have said that they've struggled getting this done, so I'm going to mess with it for a while and see how we uh, how we work out. So with a little bit of brute force, I was able to get this thing up inside of there. Got these nuts started already. Again, I'm just leaving everything loose right now until I'm able to make sure that everything is going to fit with the charge pipes and whatnot before I tighten everything up. So uh, I'll keep you posted. So first things first, I'm taking these metal retaining doodads, clips, or whatever you want to call them. I'm taking them off the charge pipe because they are just digging into the new charge, uh, the coupler that where it attaches to and it's just making it more difficult. So I think if the if it's just straight rubber, I think it might be more pliable and be able to get on there easier. So I'm gonna try that. So I took these clips, these two clips off, and they were just basically attached into the uh, the rubber with these little teeth here. So I just had to pry those off with a screwdriver and some pliers. And then this last one went around the rubber, but then it also is riveted to the collar. So I just Cut it off with some dikes. Uh, Nipex pliers. I put the collar, the clamp back over the hose. And now with those things out of the way, you can see I was able to get this thing started in just under a minute. Not too hard. Uh, now that it's started, I'm probably just going to spray it with some WD-40 and force it on. So after wrestling with it for a few minutes and a little bit of WD-40, I was able to get it on. Uh, clamp, just got it, well, it's not loose, but it's just barely on there right now. I need to tighten it up. But again, I'm going to wait until I get everything in place before I tighten everything down. So there's one side. Now I just got to get the other side. And same thing here. You can see these, well, there's some light. See the metal brackets? I'm gonna go ahead and get all that stuff off. Do the same thing I did to the other side. So this other side was proving to be more difficult, and it's really tight down there. So I went ahead and loosened up the clamp on this side right here just to get that top piece out, so I have more room to play with down below. I was able to get it barely, barely started just by wiggling it around a little bit. So now it's gonna be the same thing. Just spray down with some. WD-40 and force it on there and then we'll get everything tightened up. Alright, so after a few more minutes of wiggling and spraying, it's on there. I didn't use any pliers. I didn't want to grab it and mess it up and tear it, so I just wiggled it and came on. I got this back together up top here. I ended up loosening up this clamp here, taking this whole coupler off putting it back on this end and then forcing it on that to the turbo and it seemed to be a little bit easier. Um, all right, so now I got that. I uh, just want to show you guys, remember to put the map sensor harness back on. Okay, and that should be good. So now I'm going to go ahead and start putting everything, tightening all, up all the bolts and uh, I got all the clamps on the bottom side tight. Got this one over here nice and tight. And this one over here that's good and tight. So charge pipes are all hooked up. So I got all the bolts tight down here, down here. Went ahead and put those bolts in, tightened up the nuts on the brackets, and I fitted this plastic piece. I had to retrim this a little bit more to go around there, but it's all good. And this is all gonna be behind the bumper anyway, so I'm not really caring about how, too much about how it looks. It's more functional. All right, so the bumper bar is back on. Got those bolts over there. Um, don't forget to hook up this 
sensor here for the active grill shutters that are no longer on the uh, that were not included on my vehicle. Um, all right, so now I just got to put these bolts through and put the nuts on the back. Uh, one more thing, you might want to uh, make sure you leave yourself enough room to get access to this bolt back here, this plastic thing will get in the way. I had to trim it I just used a uh, tool like this, a little hacksaw. Went up inside of there, trimmed the plastic out of the way so I can get my wrench on it, get everything nice and tight. Alright guys, so I'm almost done. I got the bumper back on pretty much. Um, got all the bolts up here. Got bolts down in there and on the other side um, put the radiator cover back on I'm just working on the underneath uh, then after that I'm gonna put my wheels back on and lower it down put all these clips back in here here all those same thing on the other side and underneath Put all these screws in and all these things in. So <clears throat> everything's pretty much done. I had the wheels off because I was going to paint the calipers, but I'm going to wait to do that. I'm going to get the wheels back on so I can get this thing started and check it out. All right. All right. So I just want to wrap up this video. Um, I went ahead and got the wheels back on last night. It was kind of late when I finished up, so I didn't really have time to do a, a, a last video. So uh, I just wanted to give you an update, though. Everything's back together. Car runs great. Uh, I took it for a test drive today during lunch, and uh, seems to be running really good. Uh, I was able to do a 13.8 on the quarter mile at 103 miles per hour, which was... 13.8 was tied for my, my best, my personal best. Uh, that was before I put the Ford Performance Tune kit in there. Uh, and afterwards, I was, for some reason, regressing, and it went back up to, like, 14.0 or 14.1. Wasn't able to get back into the 13s. But for some reason, with this new intercooler, it went right back down to the 13s. And uh, I seemed to have a little bit more power um, than before. So that's good news. I'm not sure if it was from the intercooler or from the tune, and it was just maybe a combination of the two. Um, but yeah, everything seems to be going pretty good. I did uh, use the Torque app on my phone with the OBD2 reader, and I was able to look at the charge air temperatures uh, using a plug-in. And it looks like my charge air temperatures are right around, um, well, it, starting off at like idle, it was about 80-something, which is about 5 or 6 degrees above ambient. And then after a couple of pulls, it went up to like 101, 103, something like that. So, I mean, that, that's a lot lower than it was reading before. Um, before, it was reading on the average about 90-something, 90 95, 93 at idle. And when I would do a pull, it would go up into the 140 range, 143, 146, something like that. So it, it, this was consistently a lot lower. And I never saw anything higher than about 105, and that was after doing three pulls consecutively and uh, sitting at, you know, at a, at a stop sign on the way back. So <laughs> I, I'm really happy with the performance so far of this intercooler, and I think it's only going to get better with time because now maybe the tune will start recognizing the, uh, the intercooler, and then I'll also put uh, the NGK spark plugs in at the same, the same time. So it'll probably start recognizing all these modifications that I'm doing and hopefully uh, start giving me a little bit more horsepower over time. All right, so uh, that's the end of this video. Hope you guys liked it. I'm going to try to uh, edit it and get it posted as soon as possible. I know I've got a couple of people that are interested in seeing the results. So uh, stay tuned. All right, bye-bye.